Let's start with the prayers. Om Sahana Bhavato Sahana Obunato Sahadir Yam Karavavahai Tejas Vedavadi Tamas Tuma Vir Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 We are having the study of Taitri Upanishad with Shankaracharya's Bhashyam on the second chapter called Brahmananda Valli. We are doing this study in a very slow fashion to understand the inner essence of the Vedic mantras. When you study the Vedic mantras, they are supposed to reveal our nature. Our nature is a spiritual content, which is called as Atma. This spiritual essence is eternal. It is immortal. It is changeless. Time does not affect Atma. Therefore, it is eternal. If I claim that this Atma is my real nature, I can say that I am eternal. And this claiming is called as freedom. Freedom from birth and death. It is a very, very high concept which the Veda brings about and it results in a transformation of our intellect, of our understanding about ourselves, about the Lord, the Creator, and about the world which we experience before us. Taitri Upanishad deals with the five dresses which we wear on top of Atma. If I am the spiritual essence, then what do I experience in everyday life? I experience this body, I experience the world, I experience a mind, I experience my intellect, I experience happiness in this world. All these things are dresses on top of the Atma. But the core essential feature for all of us is nothing but the spiritual essence, which is called as Chaitanyam or consciousness. It is also termed as Brahman. See, these are all names which are given to the inner essence. We are doing the first mantra. The uh, first mantra we have seen in the first mantra, there are Anuvakas. In the first, uh, in the second chapter, there are 31 verses. Verses are called as Anuvakas. And out of these 31 verses, we are doing the first chapter, first section, the second verse. What did we learn last week? I want to just quickly summarize. This is a, this is a summary note which I prepared today. It is not there along with you in the notes. It was added up today in the evening. What we are seeing is this mantra, Tasmat Vaye Tasmat Atmana Akasha Sambhutaha. Akashat Vayo Vayo Ragnihi Agne Rapaha Adabya Prithavi Prithavya Oshadaya Oshadi Vyo Annam Annat Purushaha. This gives the entire creation 
in one verse. What is this whole creation? The creation is nothing but the five elements. Where do they get born? Where is this? Where is this? Where is the place where what where what is the seed of this creation? The seed of this creation is Atma. Karanam. The cause. So from this Atma, the five elements are born. From the five elements, the food is born. From the food, a purusha is born. And then from Purusha, what are the five sheets? The food sheet, the prana sheet, the mind sheet, the intellect sheet, and the happiness sheet. So if I want to go back to know who I am, I have to go right from the top. I have to see where, where do I where do I stand today? I'm standing on the earth, looking at myself, looking at this body. I have to understand where is this Atma? We have seen in the previous verse that this Atma can be known only in the intellect. You cannot see it outside, but it is, the essence is inside. Why is it inside? Because it is extremely subtle. The cause is always subtler than the gross. Gross is seen world. Subtle is the cause. So, the first point we should understand is, in this particular, this is what we are analyzing. This is what we are going to see today. This mantra is what we are studying. That is what we are seeing today. So, what here, tasmat va e tasmat. Tasmat stands for something which is remote. That cause which existed long, long ago before creation, which is called as Brahman, is a tasma. It is here and now what I see before me. This Atma, which is Aparoksham, this Atma means what? I. The I which is there is changeless. It was there before, it is there now, it will be there in the future. That cause never is destroyed. This self is the Jagat Karanam, the cause of the universe. It is the Atma of everyone and everything in the universe. Very important point. You see, I'm going deliberately so slow in this because later on I can go fast in the other verses. If you understand this verse, this, the first section is a very important section. Then the koshas will come, then we can go faster. But here, this is very important because you should know the karana. And what is the nature of that karana? This whole jagat is taken as individual and total. This is how the Veda creates the picture in our mind. The vision of the Veda is there is an individual and there is a total. Individual is called as Vyashti, Etasmat, that means this body, and Samashti, which is the total cosmos, which is the smart. The remote and I. The same I, who am I, is the same concept, uh, the Chaitanyam, is repeated nine times in Chandogya Upanishad. In every Upanishad, we are trying to understand who am I. So when we study these Saturday sessions, we should always be clear, I am trying to know who I am. That is the essence. The goal is that. How you come to realize that, it will take time. But the, what is the destination should be clear. First thing is, I am not this body. Because body is there for some time, it goes away. I am not the mind because mind keeps on changing. Whatever is changing is not 
the changeless, not the continuous. Because I feel I'm not changing. That feeling of I am not changing is the Chaitanyam principle, is the consciousness principle. It doesn't change from birth till today. Consciousness remains the same. That is the, that is the goal. That is the one which is changeless. Now, this changeless consciousness or Brahman is the Shristi Stiti Laya Karanam. It is the cause of the birth of creation, maintenance of creation, and the resolution gr ground of the creation. Changeless intelligent, it is a changeless principle. It is an intelligent principle, it is a material principle. Like we have, we have seen this before, like the, the example is given in the, in the Veda is the spider. Spider and the web. The web is created by a spider. The spider is the intelligent cause as well as the material cause for the web. Similarly, Atma is the material cause and the uh, intelligent cause of this entire creation. And that Atma is called as what? The self. Atma is called as self. It's a very beautiful word. Atma, self. It is a self of you, it is the self of me, it is the self of this whole bunch of Bhutas. The world is a product. It is born from Brahman, it goes back to Brahman. So what is Brahman? Brahman is the Karanam. What is, a, what is a type of that Karanam? There are two types of Karanam we are seeing. One is a changing Karanam, another is changeless Karanam. Changing karanam means the milk becomes yogurt. That's changing. Changeless karanam means the waker becomes the dreamer. Waker remains, but at the same time, he becomes a dreamer and comes back as a dreamer. Uh, comes back as a waker. Similarly, atma is a changeless. It is vivartha karanam. And this point, number five, is very important. Please try to understand this because on this, on this one principle, vivartha karanam, changeless cause, a lot of corollaries are derived out of this. When you say changeless, the main thing you should understand is the effect which it produces, the product which it produces, is of a lower order of reality. For example, the rope is there, it produces, it produces rope snake. The waker is there, waker produces dreamer. Waker is the cause, dream is the effect. There is a level because there is this cause is a changeless cause. Without changing itself, the waker becomes a dreamer. And then he gets, gets back to become the waker again. Similarly, Brahman is Atma. That Atma is the waker and then it goes and it remains as Atma itself. Very, very important point. Why is it? Because it is a changeless cause. It is a cause, no doubt. But cause has got changing nature as well as changeless nature. Changing nature is seen in the time, in time. In the Vyavaharika world, everything is, if suppose you say this is the cause, it changes. It changes to become something else. So this point, remember, because, you see, there are certain points in Vedantic study, if you understand the logic, then clarity becomes very easy. For example, right now what I am telling you, Brahman is of a higher order of reality 
because it is a changeless cause. The waker is of a lower order of reality like the dreamer, like the sleeper. Upadana karanam produces effect of the same order of reality. Clay and pot, they both are of the same order. I can see the clay, I can see the pot. In Vyavahara, we have seen so many causes and so many effects. For example, the father and the son, a daughter and the mother. These are all cause and, cause and effect relationships. Another point you should remember is, in a, if there is a changeless cause, vivarta karanam, always there is ignorance is involved. Ignorance. I don't know, therefore I project a wrong, mistaken notion. Rope is not known. Rope ignorance causes rope snake. The waker ignorance causes the dream. Brahman ignorance causes waking. The third point is a startling one. How, how is it possible? But that is the fact. That is how the Shastra, that is how Shankaracharya is trying to explain to us what is your nature. My nature is of a higher order. This Brahman or Chaitanyam, which we are talking about, it's a higher order. I don't know that consciousness is my real nature, what I'm thinking, see, what I'm thinking is this body is real. But the problem is the body has got a reflection of consciousness. That I am not able to see. I am able to see the body, but I don't see the reflection of consciousness in this body. And that is the reason we say Veda is a Pramanam. Through the Veda, like eyes are Pramanam for what? The form. Years are the Pramanam for Sun. So Mandukya Upanishad in chapter 3 says that cause effect functions only in the realm of mind. This is another very subtle point. Try to pick it up. Whenever the mind is woken, then you can see the cause effect happening. Mother and the child, the sunrise, sunset. All this cause effect is seen when the mind is functioning. The mind vibrates through the Maya factor and causes delusion. Throughout the day, what are you doing? You're thinking. That thinking is called as pandanam. It is called as vibration. And that vibration causes a delusion. These are all very, these are all the secrets of Vedanta. How do we know the secret? Only when I stand as a Sakshi, as the Chaitanyam, I can know that this is a delusion. Anything which you think is a delusion. But only with reference to the Sakshi, not with reference to the world. When you're thinking about the world, about uh, uh, you know problems in the world, these are all real. But as Sakshi, as the witness, when you see it, witness is of a higher nature. Therefore, you can say that whatever is the thought process which goes on is of a lower order. Like example, the dream we say is a lower order. Sleep is, in sleep we are drowned in ignorance. Why I'm mentioning this is because you should know, at least in waking state, you should Try to see what is my experience in sleep. The experience, what we can know in the waking state is, I, I don't know anything in sleep. The mind has to be woken up in the waking state to realize the world. Similarly, consciousness, from this waking, waker's point of view, you have to be woken up to this higher level. That is why we study the Upanishads. Uttishtata, Jagrata, that is what is said in Katha Upanishad. Come on, 
he says, this is a uh, very favorite verse of uh, Vivekananda. Get up, get up to know, realize who you are. And then you will, once you realize your nature, you'll be ever free. You'll enjoy a freedom of a free mind. And then you can do wonders of th wonderful things in life. In the self, there is no perception of the self or any projections. It is a state of homogeneity, immutability. That means there is, you can't change it. It is homogeneous, one nature of consciousness. In the waking state, the mind is full of unmanifest desires. That unmanifest desires are coming from causal body, which is called as karana sharira. Why do we get desires every day in life? Because these are all hidden in the karana sharira. In Tattva Bodha, we have seen, we all possess three bodies, which you will learn only when you come to Veda. Otherwise, everybody thinks that this body, gross body is the only body I have. When you come to Veda, Veda teaches me the first lesson in Tattva Bodha is you are constituted of three Sharirams. Gross body, subtle body, causal body. The causal body is hidden. And that is the body in which we are identified in the sleep state. Ignorance. Ignorance means what? It is covered, completely covered. What does it cover? Is the question you should ask. And if you find the answer to that, you are free. That covering is covering Atma. All of us are ignorant about our nature because of the sleep state. We are, a guru comes and wakes you up to realize your nature as something beyond the sleep state. And that is the job of the Veda. Guru uses the Veda and says, come on, get up from your sleep state of ignorance. Rise up to the knowledge that you are the essence of the whole creation. It may sound very, very, uh, uh, is, is very, very big today when you hear this for the first time. But that is the fact which the Veda wants to reveal. In the waking state, we are not able to know who I am because we are never quiet for even a small moment. We are always, our mind is always looking outside into the world of objects. Continuously throughout the day, our mind keeps on thinking, what should I do next? What should I do next? Because this world of waking is a karma. Is a, this is, we are born to do action. And that is the reason why we don't understand the nature of this pure consciousness. And this mind, in the waking state, with the self-effort of studying Veda, which is Upanishad, realizes that I am that essence, which is the essence of the whole creation. And... When you do that, when you study this, that ego which is there in me, I am this body, it gets dropped. Okay? Once this is once this ego realizes that I am not the body, then what does it realize? It realizes that no jiva is ever born. The whole creation which I'm seeing today as it looks like. When I look outside, it is nothing but this pure consciousness. Okay? This hope, this, uh, so this is what is the general nature of, of, uh, of what we are, uh, what is the essence behind the whole creation.
now we are coming to the nature of creation and how how the uh, the whole the how the whole world gets created and so on so i have given you i prepared a small index now this is where we will be starting and this is how you will progress in the first section first anuvaka the definition of satyam jnanam anantam is given and where is it known in the intellect and who knows this it is the consciousness which is together with the mind called as the jiva it knows the consciousness and how does it know it knows it as transcendent principle higher principle paramartika satya that is in the first mantra of the first section which we have finished we are doing the second mantra in the second mantra what are what is what is what are we what are we uh, understanding that brahman that consciousness that satyam jnanam anantam is nothing but this atma when i say i it means consciousness it means existence it means that blissful nature which is it is always there from this atma the upanishad says that the entire five elements are projected it is like how the dream gets projected from the waker this whole universe is projected out of this atma or brahma what is the first thing which is projected space then from space what is gets born air from air what gets born fire from fire what gets born water from water what gets born the earth from the earth what gets born the herbs from the herbs comes the food from the food comes the man this is the essence of the second anuvaka the second verse which we are studying now okay so i will explain to you these other mantras as we go by i don't want to i just want to uh, i'm taking this particular mantra Uh, uh this second mantra i'll explain as and when we do the next week i'll probably explain to you the other mantras okay okay now uh the first thing which i said is that nature of what is born akasha is born and what is the nature of akasha the nature of akasha is explained that uh this akasha has got sound as the attribute suppose there was no space there will be no sound because of sound because of space only there is sound in this whole universe this is a discovery of the rishis scientifically you can do research and you will come to the same conclusion these are all very very fine uh, realizations of the rishis in the past they realize from the from the space only air is produced from air only fire is produced from fire only water is produced these are all very scientific uh, very uh, scientific uh, discoveries so panchabhuta srishti from akasha onwards is given by the upanishad because ultimately you want to reach atma and to reach atma what you have to do you have to drop the pancha the 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 body which is made up of five elements that is why five elements is described in taitri upanishad in this fashion so that you can your mind becomes subtler and subtler as and when you study this is one of the advantages of studying vedanta my mind becomes very powerful because the mantras they help me to uh, understand very deep subjects therefore what happens i can use the same instrument the mind in my office in my house in my society i can use it because 
then the instrument I'm using is very powerful. I can analyze any topic, either in the office, either at home. I can, you know, when you do Vedanta study, what happens is usually you'll find that you can, you, you know what is the problem in any situation and you can arrive at a solution. Very well, many of the uh, students of Vedanta, they, they have found this benefit. Even if you don't understand Vedanta 100%, but these are the side, side effects, side benefits which you get out of the study of Veda. So Akasha, the first element with Shabda Guna. Clapping sound. Tearing of a paper, it produces a sound. So these are all different types of sound. All the aksharams are alphabets. In Sanskrit, aksharam. Aksharam means it never perishes. Aksharam means this alphabet never perishes. The sound, that is the, I mean, that is the beauty of Sanskrit language. It's called aksharam because it never perishes. Abhyakta rupine shabda vartate. This sound, exists in the form of unmanifest form. It is always there. Shabda guna always exists in Akasha. All the knowledge of the rishis, it always existed in the Akasha. Rishis, what did they do? They only made the unmanifest into manifest. For example, to, you are thinking about a, a plan for your business, a plan for your family. That idea, where is that idea? It was never there, but it was in an unmanifest form. It becomes manifest. And when it becomes manifest, it comes into our mind in the form of words. Through words, we are able to execute our actions. See how deep the, the Upanishads goes. All the concrete objects are dis described through words. And the words have got a manifest form and manifest form. We can go very deep in this, but I'm taking it only at a certain level because it will take time to go uh, deep into every topic. Okay, Vayu is born out of art. So once we have seen Akasha, then the next element which is born according to Vedanta is air. That is what is said in this particular verse in the Bhashya. You see, these are all the exact translations of what Shankaracharya has written about this mantra. Which mantra? The second mantra. What is that mantra? Tasmadvaye tasmad atmanaha akasha sambhutaha. That mantra he writes all these commentaries and he goes very deep. When you study these verses, you, I mean, if you have time, you can see the depth of these uh, discoveries of Shankaracharya. But the only problem is that you need a little bit more explanation because when you study some of these things independently read, it may not give you the full meaning as what uh, somebody can explain. But anyway, our, that, is the, that is the purpose of this study, where whatever is important, I'm covering it and I'm trying to give it to you. Akasha originates Vayu. And what are the gunas of uh, uh, Vayu? Guna of Vayu is, it will have its own specific guna and it will also have the guna of its cause. Your daughter or son will have certain qualities of the cause of you or your or, or the uh, father or their mother. So similarly, each and every element which is born after the space has the guna of the previous elements. Shabda guna is the samanya guna. Samanya means is the general guna of why. It is borrowed from the Karana. And what is this Sparsha? Sparsha means touch. 
We have seen this in Tattva Goda, but here what we are doing, we are going into the analysis. Why is air got sound plus its visesha guna of touch? When I touch my body, left hand to the right hand, if I touch it, I can feel it because of the air in between. So sparsha is its own special attribute of the air and the sound element, for example, uh, air, when it blows, it produces sound. Wind, suppose there's a strong wind, you'll, 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 you'll hear the sound, volcanic, uh, or, uh, you know, whenever there is a, 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 a storm, you can hear the wind. And that is because of the Shabda Guna in the air. Okay? Uh, in uh, Swami Vidyaranya, who is the author of Panchadasi, which I am doing on Wednesday sessions, he has written a commentary on Shankaracharya's Bhashyam of Taitri Upanishad. Sureshwaracharya also has written a Bhashyam of Shankaracharya. That means what? Shankaracharya has written a commentary. On that commentary, other people have written a commentary. And they, when they write a commentary, they come out with some questions and answers. One of the questions which is asked by, by this Vidyaranya Swami is, if Vayu is born of Akasha, how Brahman is Sarvakaranam? Sarvakaranam, you say Brahman is the cause of the whole world. But then now you're saying uh, uh, the, the, the cause of this air is only space. So how can you, how do you say Brahman is the problem? So answer to that question is Brahman, the pure Satchidananda consciousness factor, which is enclosed in Akasha, is the cause of Vayu. That is how you should understand all subsequent causes is all because of that original cause, which is enclosed in Akasha. If it is enclosed in Akasha, it will be enclosed in Vayu. If it is enclosed in Vayu, it will be enclosed in water. It will be enclosed in the body also. In our body also, it is enclosed, that consciousness. Why is my body having consciousness? Because it is the original cause of the universe. See how deep we are going. My body is conscious. I'm feeling the touch. I'm feeling, I'm hearing the taste. I mean, I'm, uh, 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 I'm enjoying the taste of food. I'm enjoying uh, forms. I can hear sound. All this is because there are, the body is made up of five elements and the five elements are born out of this Brahman, this consciousness factor, Therefore, this whole creation can be understood as born from Brahman, exist in Brahman, goes back into Brahman. This particular point, and why? Because it is the cause. Because in the end, what we are going to do in the end of Taitri Upanishad, we are going to say all this pancha, uh, um, uh, uh, a bunch of koshas have to be dropped. Why they have to be dropped? Because we are trying to go and hold on to the cause. So if you understand creation in this fashion, when we come to the ultimate last step, you will know how to drop this body as an atma and how to hold on to atma. Okay. Okay. Then from Agni, this is the fifth topic. From Agni comes Vayu. Okay. There is a description of Shankaracharya again. Uh, so, Sukshma Bhutas are created first. Sukshma Bhutas means what? Subtle elements are created first. That means 
the five elements which we see today as water, earth and all, this is not created first. This is the gross. If you remember Tattva Bodha, there is a grossification process, Panchi Karan. You can go back to Tattva Bodha and understand, if you don't understand. So this, what we are, uh, this, what we are understanding in Taitri Upanishad is, how the subtle elements were created first. Okay? The same consciousness, the same Brahman, the pure cause is now appearing as Akasha, Vayu, Agni. That is why in Bhagavad Gita we say God is appearing as the universe. Lord Krishna in the 10th chapter says, Bhagavad Gita, he says, the whole universe is my glory. That means what? The same Brahman, Brahman means it is Nirguna, Nirguna Tattva. Bhagavad Gita, when we talk about Lord Krishna, is a Saguna form of the same consciousness principle. So, Brahman being Vivartha Upadana Karanam, it continues to be there throughout the creation. Now you understand what is Vivartha Karanam, right? Vivartha means what? Changeless cause. At any time, you should note that consciousness is the first thing which is there. Any time, any time in creation, in waking state, first thing is consciousness. Dream state, consciousness. Sleep state, consciousness. Consciousness is the awareing, changeless principle. In that consciousness, waking dream sleep comes. In that consciousness, this entire uh, this entire uh, jagat, the world which we see, comes in. So, whenever we see Akasha, Akasha means a space, then the space can accommodate Nama and Rupa. It accommodates everything else, all the objects in creation. But the easiness of Akasha is not in the space, it is borrowed from that principle called as consciousness or existence. So, whenever we see anything, it is always a reflected consciousness. Any seen thing. That is why in Vedanta, they say, are you seeing it? That means it is not the original. It is not you. Are you seeing the body? That is not you. Are you seeing the world? It is not the real thing. It is unreal. Unreal means what? It is a superimposition on art. Okay? So, we have seen Agni is born from Vayu and uh, uh, like you have in Chandogya Upanishad, it says from clay, you can have hundreds of pots. So, the, the, the effect can be many, but the cause is one. One cause appears as this entire creation. That is the, that is the purpose of this verse of Chandogya Upanishad. It says, by knowing a single lump of earth, you know all the objects. By knowing consciousness, you will know the entire creation because all the five elements are born from consciousness. Then um, we have seen this from and uh, from where each element comes that I have seen here. From the next topic is from Agni, water is born. Okay, this is the order of creation. And what is the nature of water? The special uh, attribute of water is it has got taste, rasaha. And what is the general samanya guna of the previous elements? So the water has got sound when you when, when when you drink water it makes a sound gluck, gluck. then water has got sparsha it has got a touch you can feel the water rupaha it has got a form 
and taste. So water has got four attributes. Rasaha, Shabdaha and uh, three attributes. Okay. Then comes uh, from Jalam, Prithivi is born. Prithivi is the earth element. And what is the special guna of earth element? It is Ganda. And what are the four Samanya gunas of the earth? It is the previous four, Rasa and everything else. You know, uh, Sparsha, Shabda Sparsha, uh, uh, Rasa, and uh, 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 rasa and the uh, uh, and the sound aspect. Okay, Anand Giri has also written a commentary on Taitri Upanishad. I mean, all these people whenever they write this commentary, when you study Shankara Bhashyam, you will also find some aspects of other commentators which come in between. I'm just telling you that these there are other commentators which I'm not going into the depth. Now, after the Prithvi, after now with the Prithvi, all the five elements are over. After the Prithvi, what gets born? Food is born from the earth, which is that which which is quite logical. The whole the food which we eat, all the food we eat comes from the earth only. It may look that it is coming from something else, but ultimately the origin of all food, not only for us, for the entire uh, the, for the entire living being is from food. Okay? Then from the earth, Oshadi, that means herbs are produced. From the herbs, uh, we get all the uh, all the different foods are which is eaten, and then the male and the female they have the pigeon and the raktam, the shonitam and shukram, the egg and the seed, and then ultimately we get a human being. Okay. Prakritim purusham chayva shetra kshetra jambevacha etat this is the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where Arjuna says, I want to know the, the spiritual principle and the matter principle very clearly. In the first verse of 13th chapter, Arjuna asks this question. Teach me the spiritual principle and also the matter principle. The matter principle is this body. The spiritual principle is this Brahman, this consciousness. This Sakshi principle, Kshetragnya. In the 13th chapter, it's called Kshetragnya. Those who have done Gita, you will know the 13th chapter is the most important chapter <coughs> to understand the Vedanta portion. 13, 14, 15 chapters of Bhagavad Gita. So, Shishti, after Shariram, the Shishti stops. That means what? The Shariram, the man, the body of a human being is the highest in creation. And in the Shariram, other things are there. And the first gross thing which you see in the Shariram is the Koshas. It is the Annamaya Kosha. Why, is this, why do we say it is Annamaya Kosha? Because the body is nothing else but the food. Okay? Pancha Kosha Viveka Prakaranam, then it starts from this portion. So, final uh, product. See, you must know that the body is a product of consciousness. Okay? Very important point. It is a vikara. Because it is a vikara, it keeps on changing. Anything which is a modification will keep on changing. We all become, we all grow, we uh, decay, and then uh, the body is no longer there. 
that is why it is the nature of the body it is the nature of the material it is the nature of the five elements anything in creation you will find it is a, it is rapidly changing okay uh, why are human beings special this is a question shankara asked this question in this uh, particular section of this second verse you see shankara acharya also uh, out of his own intellect he he asked certain questions in the bhashya so that we can understand the text more deeply deeper why purusha manushya shariram all sharirams are born out of anna and it is only the purusha only the human which can which has an intellect and why do we say this purusha is the highest because of the intellect and it can perform actions it can change the actions number 1 it can also know the truth which is brahma human alone has got free will choice what about the animals animals are living as per their prarabdha they have no free will but they only uh, the the free will manifests only in a human body all jivas have free will that is what makes them special i can decide not to attend a class i can decide to attend a class or not to attend a class that is what is called as free will so cow in present janma has no free will unmanifest free will exists in the cow in the next janma the cow may become a man and then it will enjoy its free will so the jiva portion has got free will and then it takes different bodies according to its prarabdha karma okay um this explains uh, the uh, about the about the speciality of the human being this verse so srishti comes from brahman srishti means creation it comes from brahman first what comes pancha bhuta srishti then bhautika srishti bhautika means what it is the products which are born out of the five elements prithvi annam purusha human body all this we have seen so manushya is superior most with respect to karma and jnana okay that's is uh, uh, karma means what actions animals also do actions but it is it is uh, pre built in them it is programmed uh then then there is a little bit of discussion on desires you see we have desires to fulfill so therefore we are special and then we can fulfill our desires we can fulfill our ichcha ichcha shakti is there in us we have the purushartha purushartha means the four goals dharma artha moksha dharma artha kama moksha these are the four goals which all human beings have therefore it makes them special uh okay what is the significance of pancha kosha viveka okay why do we study this uh, why do we need to discriminate the five koshas now this shankaracharya says it is an explanation of yo ved nihitam gohaya parame vyoman this is there in the rig mantra see satyam jnanam anantam we have seen the first verse in that verse there is this portion yo ved nihitam gohaya 
the one who realizes in his intellect that he is not the ahamkara body mind complex he is the one who realizes his nature why do we need to do panchakosha because you want to understand your nature what is your nature brahman brahman means what consciousness existence happiness bliss that is your nature but why do we say that i don't know my nature it's because of ahamkara i take myself to be the body i take myself to be this mind taking i am the body i am the mind is called as ahamkara ego how do i remove this ego by the knowledge of five koshas so i have to remove the five koshas which are which are gross in nature which are made up of the five elements and then reach the subtlest which is called as atma so that is the reason we have to do panchakosha viveka how do how do you normally do viveka viveka means discrimination suppose you want to show something which is uh very subtle you have to start from the gross so annamaya is the grossest anandamaya is the subtlest what is anandamaya i feel i am very happy that's happiness is the subtlest in us body is the grossest now i have to go beyond that happiness to understand atma to understand the witness of that happiness witness of the ignorance which i experience in sleep which is so subtle in nature therefore i have to do viveka at every level suppose you want to see arundhati nakshatra a star called arundhati so where do you say you what you will do you will show it's called a shaka chandra nyaya you will take you will suppose you want to show that star in the sky to your son who is 7 years old or 5 years old what will you say you want to show him the star but he, he can't see the star you will say that take him near the tree he says can you see the tree can you see that branch go beyond the branch beyond the tree you will you will see there is something shining that is the that is the around that is star so similarly if i want to know atma i have to show the gross body the subtle body and then the causal body and then show what lies beyond the causal body or the five koshas therefore discrimination is a very important factor for <clears throat> understanding atma okay so shankaracharya goes why what into see he goes into the depth of all this uh, study and then buddhi comes to the innermost self then what happens buddhi gets the power to hold the self see shankaracharya explains this very beautifully in mandukya upanishad he says you have to do omkara meditation and how do you do omkara meditation you split the word om into a u ma a you say it is the waking state o is the sleep uh, uh, dream state ma is the sleep state so when you chant o the first three sounds which you hear a o ma the sound represents waking dream and sleep that is only the first portion then shankaracharya says meditate on the silence which comes after you chant om 
drop the sound ohm and be with the silence. When you are with the silence, you are with the art. Similarly, in Taitri Upanishad, when we study the five koshas, we have to meditate on Annamaya Kosha is not me. Like you do, waking state is not me. Similarly, you do, Manamaya is not me. Pranamaya is not me. You have to deliberately take your mind and go step by step. And ultimately drop the five koshas and say that whatever is there which is there after you drop the five koshas is your real self. Okay? So that is, that is how you try to understand and realize your nature. To prepare this intellect, for example, when you go mountaineering, you have different camps, 5,000 feet, 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, 20,000 feet, 25,000, and then 29,000 feet. That is the Himalayas. You slowly you climb. Similarly, slowly you climb to the Atma, Kosha by Kosha. Annamaya Kosha to Pranamaya Kosha, from Pranamaya Kosha to Manamaya Kosha, you have to go to each Kosha and then say, Atma is not this. Atma is not the Prana. Atma is not the food. Atma is not the mind. Atma is not the intellect. Atma is the witness of the thoughtless state of the mind. This is a very, very deep analysis of your nature. Who am I? I am the Sakshi, the witness of all the thoughts in my mind. The Sakshi is called as Atma. That witness is called as Atma. Atma is not the Annamaya, it's not the gross body. It is not the Prana. That is how you have to learn Taitri Upanishad. Okay, each of these koshas we are going to study and we are going to say that I am not this because it is gross. I am not this because it is subtle. I am not this because it is causal. Okay. Then we come, uh, so this is the, uh, see, whenever we study, there is these three sections you will find where it explains to you the, uh, it explains to you the mantra, it explains to you the anvaya. Anvaya means how do you derive the grammatical uh, way to understand the particular mantra. Okay? Then you have, this is what is called as anvaya. And then you have the the meaning of the verse. So in the uh, in the in in this month in this section there is a third mantra. Now we have finished the second mantra of the first section. Totally there are three mantras in the first section. In the the third portion of the mantra, the first mantra is. Uh, a verse which is generally used for meditation. When you want to meditate, then you just use it as a comparison of a particular body. You compare it with different, different koshas. So in this first mantra, Shankara, the Upanishad just introduces how you should meditate. This is a typical Taitriya meditation. Uh, useful whenever in all the five koshas you will get this portion. So when I discuss the different koshas, you this will be the last portion which will be discussed in each kosha. So what is it? Uh, how do you meditate? You take uh, it is meditate. That means each kosha can be meditated in this fashion. You look at the head of the human body. You look at the right side, left side, the central portion, and what is this support? There are five aspects of a human body. Head. 
right side, left side, central portion, that means the heart. And then what is the lower, which is the bottom portion, which is the, which is holds, which is the support. So, the, the, uh, and this is the way there is a rig mantra in every of these koshas. In the end, there will be a rig mantra which explains how you should meditate. You will not, pro you will not uh, focus too much on this. I am just mentioning to you, when you study the Upanishad, you should know what that means. Okay? Uh, head is a shiraha. This is uh, the Sanskrit description. Dakshina pakshaha is the right side. Uttara pakshaha is the left side. Pucham pratishtha. That is what you will get. Uh, uh, as the cent, uh, as the lower portion. So five parts are clearly visible in Annamaya. Prana in Vayu Tattvam, Manaha, there is no shape. I mean, these are all uh, which will come. I will, I will explain to you as and when we do these uh, koshas, okay? Uh, okay. This is just to explain to you the left side, middle portion, head and bottom and so on. Uh, the shape of the Annamaya, see what is the shape of this kosha or this sheath? The shape is given by the food. So uh, uh, what, how is this... Uh, the shape of the kosha taken, it is taken as for the body. So similarly, for most of the cases, when we take the shape, it will be used. It will, the, the shape of the mind is also taken as the shape of the body. And uh, uh, so Andamaya kosha means it is the shape of the body. There's some uh, this, there's some revision here. I'm not taking the revision. These are all revisions, yeah? So I'm not focusing on them. Okay. When we do this koshas, Shankaracharya says, now this is, this is a very uh, important portion. Uh, this is used for Shankaracharya in many of their commentaries. What he says is that we have to drop the kosha as not real. It is anatma. See, when we study our body, we have to study our body with reference to Atma. So the first thing which we have to do is, the kosha is Anatma. So the thing is, Anatma Tattva Nishaya. So the first thing you know is, Annamaya is Anatma. Then what is the second thing you should know? Karyata Nishaya. Karya means it is a karya. Annamaya is a product. Similarly, all the all the five koshas. Then Annamaya is name and form. It is name and form of the body. Mithyatva nishaya. Mithyatva nishaya means what? It is appearing. It is experienceable, but it is not real. Why is it not real? Because this Annamaya can be resolved in Pranamaya. How we will see it later on. Next, next, probably in the next session, I'll tell you how you resolve. So the resolution, what happens? Resolution happens of the Vyashti individual in the Samashti. Vyashti means what? 
it is in the body. Samashti means what? It is in the totality. So this Annamaya is resolved in the food which belongs to the Samashti. So there will be a verse in uh, there will be a verse which will tell us that all the Annamaya ultimately goes back to food only. That is what we will see in the next section. Uh, but these five points, try to just remember, I'm, you, I'm just introducing it to you now, but in many other future commentaries, you will, you will find that this aspect of how I, sh I should uh, say that the body is anatma, why do I say body is unreal and atma is real? See, this is where the Viveka comes. In, in uh, Vivek Chodamani and all that, or in Tathogoda itself, you say, the, uh, the Shankaracharya says, you should try to discriminate real and unreal. Real means it exists for three periods of time. What exists for three periods of time? In the past, it was there. Before the body was born, consciousness is there. When the body is born, consciousness is there. After the body is gone, consciousness is there. Therefore, we say consciousness is real. Try to understand this point. Very important when we try to come to Vedanta. In Vedanta, we say there is only one real factor in the entire creation. Everything else is a product, is anatma. So, you have to drop the anatma. Why do you drop the anatma? Because of this five reason. Anatmatva nishaya, karyatva nishaya, nama rupatva nishaya, mithyatva nishaya, pravilapanam. In each of the koshas, you have to apply these five rules. As you do the fifth kosha, you will remember this very well. You know, mind is, why prana is not, uh, prana is not atma because it is anatma. It is karyam. It is name and form. It is mithya. It appears, but it is not permanent. It is, it has got pravilapanam. Prana goes into manaha. Manaha goes into buddhi. Buddhi goes into ananda atma. Ananda atma ultimately is resolved into atma. Okay? So, this is a, this is a process which Shankaracharya will take it up in every kosha. Do you understand this process? In the beginning, it will be easy for you to drop each of these koshas and arrive at Atma as the real nature. Okay? So, Pravilapanam means what? Resolution. Resolution is extremely important in the study of Vedanta. You must resolve the three Sharirams. You should resolve the five koshas. You should re resolve. Resolve means what? Intellectually. It, you, cannot, you cannot resolve it physically. Intellectually, you have to understand that they are of a lower order of reality. Atma is of a higher order of reality. Okay? So as you do this type of upasanas, your mind will become more and more subtle and uh, and, 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 uh, and therefore you will be able to understand your nature clearly. There is a section here which talks about different types of upasanas, ahamgraha upasana. See why I am not going to depth of this meditation is because nobody is going to practice this today. In today's world, uh, these type of upasanas are out of, uh, uh, they, are, they, are not, they are not being practiced. 
and uh, therefore I won't spend too much time on those. Uh, but when we, when we come to Mandukya Upanishad and do that, there will be some upasanas there, which I'll be taking in very big detail. Okay, I'm planning to do Mandukya Upanishad Bhashyam uh, for the Wednesday class sometime soon. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I will announce it later on. Okay. Uh, See, we uh, normally what happens is, I told you that we have to resolve the individual into the total. So the individual body has to be resolved in the total food. And uh, that is what is explained in the sections which are uh, coming forward. Uh, Annam has got two meanings. One is, whatever is eaten, adhyate bhujyate. Whatever is eaten is called as annam. There is a second meaning of annam, which is not so popular. And that is, annam itself is the eater. It is the consumer. Food itself consumes all beings in old age due to lack of digestion. Food destroys the body. It consumes the life itself in the end. That is another meaning. So if you consume inappropriate food, it will destroy you. That's why in, uh, Lord Krishna in the sixth chapter says, yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu Yukta sapna vabhodasya yogo bhavati dukkaha. Be moderate in eating, be moderate in recreation. In all actions, you be moderate. And also, you have moderation in sleep. Don't oversleep or undersleep. So, these are all habits which are good and uh, they are related to the Annamaya. Okay, what I'll do is this next topic is pranamaya. See, we have finished one portion. Now, annamaya is born from food and it goes back to food. That is the essence what we have learned today. This annamaya, there is an essence of annamaya and that essence means it is held by prana, which is what we are going to do next week. So we will start from this uh, uh, slide 320 next week. And uh, this is the second kosha. We have finished the first kosha. We are doing the pancha kosha viveka. We have started the viveka, the discrimination. First, what did we learn? We said that the whole world is created by the five elements. The five elements, they become the body. Now we are trying to see the five elements. They have become the body, they have become the mind, they have become the intellect, they have become the three sharirams, they have become the five koshas. Now we are trying to discriminate the five koshas and are trying to go back to our nature as Atma. So one kosha is the cross body, which is Annamaya. The subtle body is divided into three parts, which is in the, in, in the when you study the kosha, pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya, these three are taken as subtle body. I have explained this in the earlier sessions. And what is the causal body? Causal body is ananda. Okay, so we have to go through these five layers and then ask the question, who am I? Okay, see how deep our study is. This is the study how of Bhashya. 
whenever you study Bhashyam, it is an in-depth study. Very, very deep. Shankaracharya's commentaries are phenomenal in this. Yeah? Okay, we'll stop here and uh, we'll take the Pranamaya next week and then we will go to the Manomaya, Vijnanamaya and so on. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions on what we have discussed, uh, you can ask them in the end of the session today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Okay, there are a few remarks which uh, I will go through first. Venkatesh is saying that from earth, Oshadi is born and from food, Purusha Prakriti. Does this apply to all life on earth? Yes, it, it applies to all life on earth. All life means what? It is all, uh, yeah, all life principles, they all originate from food. That is what you should understand. Uh, Okay. Uh, is there any, uh, if you have any other further questions or you want to ask a specific question, you can ask me. Uh, Shanmugam has unmuted everybody. So you just have to unmute yourself and ask. Uh, Shanta has uh, raised, uh, 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 raised her hand. And if you have any question, you can just uh, use the, uh, the hand gesture. Okay. Or you can just, uh, after you finish, you can ask the next question. May I? Uh, continue? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, it's quite interesting um, for me to understand this, um, you know, the five layers. We all know these Akasha say, uh, Vayu, Vayu say, Agnihi, Agni, yeah. and all of that, um, Jala and Jala say this. But um, what was interesting for me is everything is in the Akasha. <laughs> As Correct. you mentioned, yes. the possibilities, the ideas are all in the Akasha. Absolutely, yes. And, Your mind, um, all the thoughts are in Akasha. Are in Akasha. Now, I was, as the talk was going on, I was uh, in my own little thought. And I want to clarify what I've, what my thinking is in the right direction. Just like our body has got five panchakoshas, okay, which are... Um, hiding or our real self or the reflected self, um, are these also, these five elements which form the Akasha, the Vayuhu, Agnihi, all these are also responsible for us not to go beyond that Akasha to see the cause which is Brahman? Yes, you're right. It is, it is these five elements which are hiding our nature. Ultimately, it is the five elements only. And the moment you understand that this is the nature of creation, you see, one thing you should understand is that creation is like this. Now, why the creation is because of the prana, the karma and all that, that is, at a, that is how you explain the creation uh, in a logical way according to the Veda. But then, you see, when you come up to this level, what you should, the way Veda wants you to think is, the Veda wants you to ultimately say, drop the creation and just to say that I am the Adhishthanam for the entire creation. I'm the Adhishthanam means I'm the support. <clears throat> and the support here means I am the consciousness principle in which the whole waking state is coming and going. In the waking state, I'm experiencing space. So does it not mean that you are actually beyond the Akasha because if you yes, are in the... Um, because if you are mm. thinking, I mean, first of all, we are only having the reflected consciousness. We don't, I mean, we are, because the mana is, I mean, it's only reflected consciousness. So there is nothing real in me. I, I feel there is nothing real in me other than this Prakriti. Because it's the yeah, light I mean, or the shine I mean, uh, which makes it, um, yeah. um, you know, uh, what should I say, enlightens the mind. 
and then the whole prakriya starts so therefore uh, there is nothing real in me i'm only having the reflected consciousness and that reflected consciousness or what is reflecting is beyond the sky beyond the akasha so therefore um, i don't see um, i mean i feel um, if i have to claim myself as brahman i have to go beyond the akasha uh, uh, principle because the uh, rest all is prakriti including the human beings on the earth and plants yes. and everything yes so what is also right prakriti way? yeah but beyond the akasha that's why i yes. said beyond that's akasha. right yes so is that what um, when we say claiming is going beyond all these five elements forget about yes. the panchakoshas because panchakoshas right. are so limited because we still have the outside or uh, you know world yes um, is that would that be way of looking at it yes you are right you are absolutely right you are in the right direction uh, you have understood correctly what it means is that this whole creation has to be dropped creation means what it is a projection of that pure consciousness the pure when we say um, uh, when we say that there is when when we are talking about see that it is uh, you must understand there are two levels in which we analyze one level is with respect to our body we are trying to analyze creation then we that then this is how you go from kosha to panchabhutas and then we say there is something beyond panchabhutas mm-hmm. now once you have crossed once you have become your mind gets used to thinking mm-hmm. that actually i am i am only consciousness and the rest of the things is all it is just a, it is just like a dream it is like a, it is an experience but it is not a fact mm-hmm. uh, it is something which i experience no doubt it is an experience for example the world is an experience the body is an experience the mind is an experience mm-hmm. veda says that experience is not reality mm-hmm. this is the conclusion the veda makes and they want you to make the same conclusion experientially everything is there hmm. the world is there panchakoshas are there but what it wants to tell you is don't make the conclusion that i am whatever i am experiencing experiences yeah so what the veda case... saying is you are the experiencer consciousness hmm. and not the experienced anath so now i want to take you to the completely different tangent because the first one was very much beyond where i'm thinking or i'm yeah. I, i mean i was looking at panchakosha as the prakriti itself and going beyond akasha to claim the brahman now coming to um uh, you know individual level um you mentioned that we have a free will okay um uh, but i feel um when you in bhagavad gita uh, there is very limited free will we have got because we are bound by our prarabdha karmas and we the our free will is only uh, as much as we can create our agami karma um is that right because um, see every i mean i feel even the animals they if you think that is that they, they are programmed as you said everybody is programmed i feel even we are programmed because we are born in certain family because of our prarabdha karmas correct, we correct. have got everything and you know where you are say today if i'm in uk or some reason you know america it's because they are programmed we, we have although we are born in india we have moved because of our prarabdha yeah, correct, karmas that's right yes so how in that case we are uh, how does our free will actually work to make these agami karmas that's that you know i don't know whether it's very easy to explain my question i'm talking about something um beyond the real feeling that i have a free will uh it's not about me saying i want to sleep or i want to attend the class or i don't want to attend the class the choice is mine but is it also not my prarabdha karma because i could have not come to bhagavad gita if i had not done some karmas before i would have not come to upanishads if i had not done something so how does this um formation of agami karma come when you have limited um free will that's my question 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, just to put you in the right perspective, we are only discussing with reference to the three karmas, Sanchita karma, Prarabdha karma, Adhavi karma. Hmm. So, our frame of discussion is only karma theory. Hmm. Now, in the karma theory, the body is born as per the Prarabdha karma in a particular family and it goes through a particular uh, environment Whatever is provided to me is as per the prarabdha karma. Mm. Because of the prarabdha karma, I am born in a certain family in a certain uh, at a certain time, and then I am going through these experiences as per the prarabdha karma. Mm. Now the karma theory also says this prarabdha karma is a small portion out of the sanchita. Hmm. Now, while we are doing actions, we, the Lord has given us the free will. The Lord has given us the free will to understand the Veda and come out of the cycle. That is a separate matter. Yeah. But to understand what is agami karma, agami karma means while I am acting, I have a choice. Hmm. Every day, if, for all of us, as soon as we get up in the morning, we can either pray to God or not pray to God or uh, just go on our activities. And when we have a free will, see, Lord has given us the free will. Now, the free will is basically to rise up in the ladder, in the in the dharma ladder, and reach our goal. That is our free will. The free will is given for us to rise up to the level of atma. Mm -hmm. Now, in our free will, suppose, for example, you use the free will and do atrocious things and do adharma. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do good karmas in this body, that means you are adding punyam. Mm -hmm. You are adding punyam to your, your, your load of karmas. You are, suppose you have uh, suppose you have 100, it becomes 105, 110, so on. Now suppose you, suppose while acting, you don't act according to dharma, but you go as per adharma. Whatever is adharma actions is called as papa. Mm -hmm. So, while acting itself, the karma theory says you have a possibility to add on future punyam, uh, uh, future punyam and papam because some of the punyam which you do may not be able to be fulfilled in this life. For example, you may have studied a PhD and you may have you may you may do you may get a good job and you and you uh, so you get results now itself. But there are certain karma palams which you do, which, which you can't get fulfilled in this life. Suppose you have, for example, suppose you have, by some chance, you have uh, given food to, say, 10,000 people in the world during a lifetime. It is a punya karma. Now, that punya karma, if it doesn't produce result in this birth, it has to give you a result in the future birth. That is what is called as Adami. Hmm. Okay. So, the, the, yeah. Okay. So, suppose, the free suppose will, yeah, the free the, will of acting free, in the form of dharma or adharma leads the agami karma. That's correct. Which yes. Then, oh, this. Okay. Now you understood, right? Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank good. You very very good. good. Okay. There is some more questions. Whenever we come to this free will, there is hundreds of questions. Yeah, whenever we come to free will and part of the there is hundreds of questions because this is a never-ending topic, you know. Okay, uh, I'll just go through some of them. Um, how is the application of anvaya and chattels in meditation? Anvaya and uh, uh, anvaya and uh, Vithi Rekha, is that what you mean? Um, can you can you come on uh, and explain to me your question? Yeah, what is it? How the anvaya and vidrega? Yeah. Apply, apply meditation. Oh, very good question. Good. 
See, Anvaya means, okay, Anvaya and Vetirika. Anvaya means you hold on. Uh, Anvaya means it is superimposition. Vetirika means negation. Okay? I'll give you a simple example. I'm giving you the example of Mandukya Upanishad, Omkara Meditation. Anvaya means what? Whatever is, uh, wh whatever is, um, uh, uh, let us take, for example, in meditation, suppose you say that I am Atma, okay? I am Atma and I negate the Anatma. First, what you do, you take the anatma, you start with anatma and say, I am the five koshas. You can do it in two ways. One is you take the, either you take the uh, avastas like Jagrat avastha, uh, Sopna avastha, Sushupti avastha. You take the three states or you can take the five koshas. I will take, for example, uh, the three states. That is easy to understand in meditation. So I will explain to you how it is done. When you take waking state, there are two aspects to the waking state. The first aspect is Atma. The second aspect is Anatma. Atma means consciousness, which is my real self. It is an eternal, immortal self. It is mixed up with Anatma, which is the body, five koshas, all that. So first you say, in meditation, you take the waking state, you say the Anvaya portion is, what is common portion is the consciousness. I hold on. Vyatireka means what? I drop the, I negate the uncommon feature in the three states itself. Now I am only talking about the three states, waking, dream and sleep. In the waking state, hold on to common feature, which is consciousness. Anatma is the gross world and the gross body. So exercise number one, you remove the, you negate, Vatireka means what? You negate. You negate what? The gross body. Okay. Next, you come to dream state. In the dream state, you imagine you are a dreamer. In the dream state, I am still there. Who am I? Consciousness. What is that consciousness? It is the light in which this entire dream world is coming and going. It is the same light in the waking also. In the waking uh, world also. Even now, for example, I am the light of consciousness. Doesn't change. Keep that always. I am the light. I am the light of consciousness. Hold on. Hold on to that. Vithireka in the dream world is what you remove. Negate that dream world. Dream world is the world created by the mind. Why do you negate it? You apply the five rules which we learned today. If you are able to do that, you are a very uh, advanced seeker. Dream world is a projection of the mind. But in the dream, you don't know that. On waking up, you know that it is a projection. Right now, you are in the waking state. You are saying the dream I enjoyed yesterday was Mithya. So what do you, what do you, what do you, what is the Vethi Reka you are doing? You are negating what? The Anatma portion. What you are, uh, what is the uh, Anvaya portion which you cannot negate? which is unnegatable, unnegatable is the I. I saw the dream, I am waking, I went to sleep, I, 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 when you say, what is that I? That I is the consciousness. What went to sleep? It is the mind which went to sleep. So you do Vethireka of that. Vethireka means negated. So in meditation, very simple, you do Atma, Anatma. Atma is Anvaya, hold on to it. Common. 
all the time it is unnegatable. It is the only thing which is unnegatable. You cannot negate Atma at any time. Suppose you say Atma also I negate. Shankaracharya says, then you become non-existent, which is not true. At no time you become non-existent. You are existent first. You experience a world or you don't experience. That is a separate matter. Experience and, ex and not experiencing is what is called as vithireka. You do vithireka. Vithireka means what? Negation. Of the experience, but hold on to anvaya. The common portion in all the three states. Like for example, deva, uh, typical example given in the Vedic literature is Devadatta. That Devadatta who was there before, I am seeing now in front of me as a Devata, what you are holding, the common person called as Devadatta you are holding on to. You are dropping all the old features, you are dropping all the current features of the person who in front of you and, you are, and that is, Vithireka means dropping of the features. Anvaya means holding on to the core of the person. Have I an answered your question? Uh, thank you, thank you, Chakarji. Thank you. I could I could get something. Okay. If you have not got it, again you ask me you, if where is the difficulty you are facing? What I wanted to know while meditating the, that you know you told me that holding and releasing that portion now it is getting getting something better than because I'm not getting that I mean that and where how to how to do the meditation. Ah, okay, okay. Now you know. Good. Ah. Very good. Okay. See okay. what you have to do in meditation is that I, 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 I am there, I am there, I am there, I am the consciousness. Don't negate it. That okay. you hold on. Never negate that. And you, in fact, what you do, the best thing to say is deliberately say, I am Chaitanyam. Aham Brahma Asmi. Deliberately, but, uh, deliberately but one... say it. Yeah, but but one thing is that you told me this now when you told waking waking uh, waking state and the dreaming state. What happened at the time of the sleeping? Okay, now in the in the sleep state, according to Vedanta, sleep state is nothing but it is the state in which my entire sorupam is covered. I am the Atma is covered 100%. Sleep state is a state of ignorance, total ignorance, where you don't know your own self, you don't know where you're sleeping, you don't know your body, you don't know whether you exist or not. You only upon waking, you say, I had a good sleep. During sleep, you can't say that because it yeah, is yeah, yeah. total, total. You see, it is like covering the whole cosmos with something. You put the whole cosmos, cosmos into a dark room and then you just sit inside the dark room. What will you see? Nothing. Because the entire room is dark. There's no light. But who is illumining that darkness? I don't know anything. When you, when, you ex when you say, I don't know anything, there was an experiencer of nothing. That is the Shankaracharya's brilliant uh, commentary in Mandukya Upanishad. He, he, this is the last thing he tells the opponent who comes to fight with him, debate with him, who says, the debater comes and tells him, in sleep state, I don't know anything. But then Shankaracharya says, for that ignorance, there is a Sakshi. Okay. okay. That Sakshi is what is your real state. That is your consciousness. So okay. Okay. if you are able to hold on to don't, you see, there are two ways in which you, you can describe your, your experience of sleep. One, you can say, 
I experienced nothing. Okay? This is what all of us normally do. If you don't come to Vedanta, you just say, I just slept, that's all. Because you're not aware of what, you are not exposed to Veda. Only when you come to Veda, you will learn from Shankaracharya that there is a witness which is witnessing the sleep. Without the continuous presence of that I which did not go to sleep, which is the consciousness which never sleeps, you can never relate your experiences of waking, dream and sleep belonging to you. Oh. You can never say, I went to sleep, I had a dream, I am now woken up. If there was not a continuous I which was there in all the three states. Hmm. The same thing you should apply in the five koshas also. I am the mind, I am the body, I am the intellect, I am the happiness which I experience. That is also me only. So there is an I which is flowing continuously. What is changing? The body, gross body is changing. Body was 5 years old, body was 20 years old, body is 50 years old, body has changed. It is the outside posha, outside sheet. Mind, prana, let's go to the next level. Prana. Prana is continuously changing. It was, uh, it was when I was jogging, when I was walking, it was in a different mode. Now I am, it is stable. Prana is not me. Mind. Mind is changing so rapidly, violently, morning thinks something, evening thinks something else. So mind is also not me because it is changing. Intellect, karta, bhokta. In the sleep, there is no doer at all. No, in the sleep, there is no enjoyer. That I which is enjoying, that is the intellect. It is the intellect which is saying karta, bhokta or pramata. Karta means doer, bhokta means enjoyer, pramata means perceiver of the world. All this three together is called as the intellect. It is called as the vijyanamaya kosha. Now, that is also changing. It is not there. It is not there in the dream state. It is totally different. This, this enjoyer of the waking state is not there in the sleep state. But what is continuously there throughout my life, my current life, my future life, every time, if I hold on to that I which is continuously there, that is what is the goal of entire spiritual study. Okay? Hold on to that. Okay. What happens is, I will go only one last lesson in this whole exercise. The moment your intellect, each one has got a buddhi, each one has got an individual mind. In the seat of meditation or in the class, it can happen in both the, in, at both the times. Suppose for some, for suppose you are a meditator and you want to, you like meditation. You take this Omkara meditation and do it in the way Shankaracharya is teaching you to do Omkara meditation, which he teaches in Mandukya Upanishad's first chapter. I am going to take that meditation. It is a beautiful meditation. You do that meditation three times and you have reached your Atma. Finished. Because it's so powerful. It's But... Learning the meditation is difficult. But the meditation, once you know the knack of meditating on Atma, using Omkara, the result is phenomenal. You will never have a doubt that I am not Atma. It is so powerful. It, it, see, uh, so, that, so these are the, these are the different... Um, uh, aspects related to your question, but your question is extremely powerful. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
how is the application? I've seen that is okay. Here is is Prarabdha Karma guide free will or free will can overcome the Prarabdha. Okay. See, Prarabdha, Prarabdha Karma, the free will, there are certain Prarabdha Karmas which can be uh, overcome by free will. Some small portions, you can say, okay. Uh, you know, uh, I use my free will. I can use the intellect to say I should not go on this path. If I go on this path, I will be committing more crime or whatever. I'll be doing more adharma. So there, there are certain actions which can be controlled by your free will, which the Veda itself says that some portions you can control. But there are many, many areas in your life, events in your life, which is prarabdha based. And each one of us will realize this. I, it's like if you are in the way in the study, uh, you will know that I have no control over this event in my family event in my business, event in my surroundings. I have no control. It just happens. And I'm caught in it. And I go through the motion of either sukham or dukham, either happiness or uh, uh, sorrow. Those are the, the karmas, are the prarabdha karmas which I have to suffer. For example, you meet with an accident. Why did I meet with an accident today? Prarabdha karma. Just, 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 there's no other answer. You can, you can ask 100 people. Nobody will be able to tell you. Similarly, diseases come to us. Why? Only thing is, the study of Veda helps you to go through these experiences in a very, very... Uh, uh, in a very uh, in a in a way in which they don't affect you. The moment you say you you are used to thinking, I am the Atma. See what happens when you study Vedanta is initially you only come to know that there is something called as Atma. But after some time, once you know that I am Atma, that knowledge is very deep in your subconscious mind. <coughs> that knowledge in the subconscious mind helps you to overcome all prarabdha karma events. That okay. is how a jnani also goes through sorrow in life. He also gets a disease. He also suffers. He also has a diabetes. He also suffers. He also has headaches like you and me, he also suffers. But then he comes out of it, he just goes through that and then he is not affected as much as a normal Ajnani is. Okay? So that's the okay. answer to the question. Okay. Thank you. Money Kandan, in dream state and sleep state, does all these five elements exist? Oh, okay. In Ajnanam state, it is a subtle state. Ajnanam is a subtle state. In the Ajnanam state, it is you, the consciousness, and Ajnanam. Ajnanam is not produced by five elements. It is, it is, uh, it is a, it is got to do with knowledge and uh, knowledge and ignorance. They are not connected to the five elements. So Karana Shariram is is the cause for the dream state and the waking state. In the dream state and the waking state, it is the mind which is the subtle body. Subtle body is made up of five elements. So in the dream state and the waking state, the five elements are undergoing the process of all experiences. Karanam is cause. Okay? 
So, we, you see, the, the basic way you should understand is that it is the mind which goes through these three states. Mind is made up of subtle elements. Born of subtle elements, it will go back to subtle elements. So when you look at it as a subtle element, then even the car and a sharidam, you can say it is a part of that, the subtle body which is which exists, it is subtle. It is subtle in it. The subtlest thing in nature is the car and a sharidam. As long as you say it is a sharidam, it belongs to the elemental group. But the moment you say atma, it is not material, it is spiritual. Spiritual, spirit is different than material. Realize I am the consciousness and drop this entire three sharirams. Sharira means you are dropping the three states of consciousness. So Manikandan, have I answered? Yes, yes. thank you, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Jacqueline, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Mishika, I just want to ask you, uh, of course, we often ask about free will, like what you say. Is free will equal to choiceless, equal to effortless? Yeah, choiceless, it's not effortless. Effort is there in all the actions. Free will means that you don't have, you, uh, you know, you don't put, uh, 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 say that, that you can change that action which is happening outside. Yeah, but it's choiceless, right? It just it happens. It's choiceless. You are, yeah. It is given to you. That means you can't, you just have to experience it as if it, uh, you know, it, it just, it, it, you, have, you have got no choice to either change the situation or not change the situation. You don't have a choice there at all. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want to ask because I think in uh, Vedanta, they keep on saying free will. And I was thinking that for free will, I think there's nothing that I can do. It just happened. But then I read somewhere and uh, they use the word choiceless and effortless. That means anything happened, it just happened. So today, somebody was asking about free will. Uh, like, you know. Uh, if we are going to attend your class or why are we here and listen to you for that number of years? Uh, in fact, it just happened. Uh, not that, you know. So it's like there is a force behind it. Uh, you call Chaitanya. That force, I mean, pushes to this state to listen to you. Uh, whether we, as a human, we say, oh, we are, I'm busy, I can't attend. But as a, as a, as a Atma, uh, it just happened. That means, uh, that's why I want to ask, uh, free will, is it, I mean, for a simple English, for a, uh, for a human being, I'm, I just want to equate free will is equal to choiceless, right? Yeah, you see, uh, generally what they say, when you, when you have this discussion on free will and fate, fate is given to you. Fate is choiceless. And you have it, it comes to you. Yeah. What Vedanta says is whenever you look at all your past till now, till this second, yes. you, you you take that this is given to you, it is your fate, and you experienced. Yes. Whenever you are analyzing all your past, you take you tell yourself, I was it just happened to me, it is all fate, and drop it. This minute, I have free will. And when you say in the future, I have whatever I want to change in the future also, always whenever you are experiencing the world, you, are, you tell yourself, I have complete free will to change, to do, not to do. And you carry on with your life. Don't, you, don't use the word fate for not doing something, oh, I'm not going to do it because it's my fate, you know? Don't do that. You assume that you have the free will. In, with your limited free will also, whatever you can do, just say, if I can do something, I will do it. If I can't do it, let it come. 
you know, for example, so many thousands and millions of people are suffering in the world. Can I go? Can I feed every, every person who's hungry? I can't. Do I, how do the birds survive? The birds are flying. They, how do they survive? There is an Ishvara. There is a creator who takes care of the food for the birds. So there is, there is an external element which is controlling the universe. That is what is that is what we call it as God, or you know, we don't know that element. So our free will is limited. Remember, our free will is only a limited free will to act, and there is a bigger controller which is responsible for this entire universe. And that is why you start praying. That prayer is nothing but surrender of your free will and say, Oh Lord, it is your word. You take care of this entire body and you move forward. Prayer works wonders because you surrender your free will in the altar of the controller of the universe. It works wonders. It works wonders because after that, what happens? It lightens your mind. Otherwise, you you think that I am the controller, and then you get into you get caught up when things don't happen as per your desires. So follow the simple rule. Whatever in the past, when I analyze my experiences, take it as given to me. Today, right now, I have a choice. Anytime you're acting, you say, I have a choice. Let me use my free will. Whatever is my free will, I will go according to that because the Veda clearly says, use your free will to understand your nature. Understand the free will is a part of the nature which has created the mind. And you are not that. What the beauty of Vedanta is, it says that you are also watching the nature. The entire external world is nature, is prakriti, including this body, including the mind. So if you stand as Sakshi, as a witness, as consciousness, you are beyond free will and beyond fate. That is where the Veda wants you to stand. But it takes time. It takes time to stand on that pedestal. But till that time, use the free will to live in the world and serve the world to the best you can. And do your duty. You see, for example, all of us have a duty. This is, a, this is something which is, uh, should be known to all of us. We have it when we are born, we have a duty in the family, in the surrounding, in the society, in our we have a duty to our own body and mind. So Jacqueline, have I answered? Uh yes, I need to digest further because okay. no problem. <laughs> it's profound, no. okay. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh Venkatesh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can we also understand that free will is something which allows you to not to be bogged down by happenings and go beyond? That is the free will. Because otherwise, you will despair into there is no further hope. Yeah, free will has to be used some to come out of the effects of the karmas. Karmas is something that can have the effects of karmas is something that you cannot avoid. Yeah. But, uh, you should not get bogged down by that. That is where the free will comes into play. Right? You're right. Yeah. Absolutely right. You see, that's what I said, that use your free will to do the best you can. Okay, karma theory is uh, happening in the background of your mind and you, whatever should come in front of you tomorrow morning will come. But in the background, always use free will. The, you know, the, the karma will bring you situations, everyday situations will come in front of you. So free will is... Uh, always a light of hope that things will become better. I will still, you see, all of us, the, 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 the best portion of our life is we all can have hope for the future. So free will helps me to hope for the future as a, as a, as a positive thing. 
You're right. I accept your uh, statement. Yeah, Chandan, go ahead. So, Shekhaji, uh, I was just thinking on this conversation that we're having. I mean, once we are about the quest of realizing, I guess, the higher order of reality, how does this uh, free will and karma is even concerning, right? I mean, is, isn't that a lower order of reality? We had this talk today about higher order of, oh, yes, higher of, course. Order of reality. Yes. And lower. You're so, right. So ultimately, our goal is to do that, realize, actually, not even understand but realize who we are and once we do that are we bound still by these free will karma and any of these discussions absolutely right you, you know the, 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 what you're saying is absolutely right this is a different plane in which we are talking about so we are talking about two planes one is a higher plane in which i am the atma i am the consciousness i am the witness our goal should be to be in that plane rather than in the plane of free will and fate. The moment you see, junior seekers will always be bogged down by free will and fate. Senior seekers will not even think of free will and fate and they will their mind will only be thinking of Atma, that's all. They will not be bothered with the free will. Oh, it, it is something which has happened to me. Therefore, you know, they, they will not be bothered. You're right. Uh, your, your thought process is absolutely clear. Good. Uh, Bharat is saying, perhaps a way of viewing free will is to, is to uh, notice one always has freedom to complete, contemplate free will, etc. or not. Yes, you're right. That's good. You, you see, whenever we talk of free will, it is always at the level of our activity, vyavahara. You know, when we are acting with our body, mind. Mm -hmm. At the level of body, mind, there is free will. Use your free will and live. But use it correctly. You see, that is where dharma, dharma comes. The, the initial portion of the Veda Veda is called Purva Gorsha, Veda Purva and Veda Anta. Veda Purva deals with free will and fate. You have certain fate, therefore you have to come, do certain come karmas, some rituals to get rid of your punya papa. You do certain roles, you do certain activities. The whole concept of Veda Purva, the ritualistic portion is all to do with the is all to do with free will. If there was no free will, there will be no Veda Purva at all. Dharma, Dharma will not be there. For example, I told you, the animals don't have uh, Dharma, Dharma emotions. They are programmed. They come, they live, they are programmed to act in a certain way. A cow cannot become a non-veg. A tiger cannot become a vegetarian. Programmed. So we are not programmed. We are programmed in such a way, but also we have a free. Okay. So take that free will as a as something which is given to us. Yeah, Bharat, you wanted to say something more? Yeah, okay. Bharat is probably not here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, sorry, but... sorry, Shakashi. Um, I was trying to get myself on from to become unmuted. Um, I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, I think um, it's it's having having faith. Um, that uh, everything is perfectly fine. That everything is viewable, seeable, experienceable, and and you're the one who is experiencing, seeing everything, all the time. And and on that basis, anything to do with choice, you you just happen to make the right right choice in in the right way by by having that faith. So it's it's even when you are um, thinking about should I do X or Y, should I go this way or that way, you, even even that delusion is um, is seen so that you can kind of stop relax the mind and then what whatever happens next is generally the right thing you don't have to worry you don't have to um 
think about what's going to what what are the consequences going to be and and i think that's where the the by by praying you 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 do have that faith that everything is somehow it's 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 all okay it's okay for you it's okay for everyone it's how it's meant to be so on on that basis though i i used to think a lot about free will as well but i have to agree the whole whole notion of free will it it just doesn't it it kind of doesn't have as much value as it used to but as but the, of course there's no harm in talking about free will because <laughs> it is important to people uh that that's all i was trying to say you oh, always yeah. have that freedom Good. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat. Uh, see, one thing I want to tell you is, even on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, our experience, I'm telling you from my own personal experience, sometimes during a day or last week, you might have felt that I didn't want to do this, but I did it. I really didn't want to hurt my parents. But I somehow I hurt somebody. Your parents, your son, your daughter, your uh, your boss, your colleague, somebody you hurt. Now, why did this happen? I really didn't want it at all. Then what you do, you say, accept it. It happened. It just happened. See, you, your mind goes into a delusion to act in a certain fashion. Many times you'll realize that certain things you really don't want to do. You didn't want to do. It is not logical for you to do, but you still do it. And that is what you call it as fate. Today, when you realize your past, that's why I said that whenever you try to re relate your past and then instead of bogging you down, why did I do it? Why did I do it? Instead of criticizing yourself, take that as a something given. It happened. My mind went into a delusion. I acted completely hopelessly wrong. It, it, now I'm okay. I'm, I will be able to correct it and move forward. I could have done Vedanta five years ago. I didn't do it, but then don't bother about it today. It happened. That's all. I was deluded. I caught up. I was caught up in the world, and therefore it didn't happen. So this way, when you analyze your experiences, always analyze your experiences in a positive way. Learn from the experiences. Be positive and move forward. Be positive. And move forward. If you can rise up to the level as what Kanan had said in uh, that you try to take things at a higher level, then of course you have really matured from Vedanta. The study of Vedanta has made a huge impact, and that is the right that, that is the right attitude. If you can get into that attitude of being a sakshi. And saying that all this free will and all is, is at a lower level and it will keep happening. You have no control over it. It just happens. A real jnani is never bothered about free will or fate. He just takes this whole thing as something which happens. That's all. At a lower plane. It is happening at a lower plane. Like what? Exactly like a dream. You see... Can you analyze your dream logically and say that I should have done this, I should have not done this in the dream? Not possible. That is only when you're woken up. Similarly, only when you're woken up to the level of Sakshi, you will have the freedom to drop your free will and also drop the fate as lower order of reality. That is the best. If you can achieve that, Superb. I mean, that is something which you are truly blessed. And you will have a very peaceful life. Vedanta says very clearly that if you are able to have a very peaceful mind, you are blessed. You are truly blessed and this will make you grow better and better spiritually. Okay, Shanta, did I answer your question or your hand is up? You want to no, ask? No, 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 I have got another question. Okay, go ahead. 
the question is regarding as you're talking about this free will and this karmas i'm thinking well if you do say purnyam you have to come to it still gets added to your product the karma and you have to come to you know use it or complete it if you do papam you still have to come back now what is a way where i can neither do papam nor i can do punyam so that i only complete my prarabdha karma don't add more karmas in my sanchita karma pot be a witness is it possible <laughs> be a witness okay be a witness every time morning to evening just tell you remind yourself i am the witness it is happening body is doing it it is the ego which is doing it it is a it is a i am a i am a uh, witness of my mind it is the mind together with the body is acting this is possible this is how all gnanis they look at their actions they say that the body is acting and the mind is acting i am a witness i will i will i'm i will go through the motion of experiences body's experiences nobody can stop nobody can stop even a gnani it cannot you cannot stop in the bhagavad gita it says clearly mm. nobody yeah. can stop the body from acting the mind from acting nobody can stop you can uh, use your free will little bit here and there but ultimately sakshi is the best mode i know uh, yeah no i i do agree with what parat said you know in the past i used to be uh, thinking of oh i should have done this or maybe that was the right way to do but uh, after coming to after going through the learning of bhagavad gita and now i just feel that it happened i'll just go with the flow i, I just don't you know try to control things or even want yes, to control right. things That's i'm right. just <laughs> leaving <laughs> it let the life flow that's all yes. and you know let's let the life flow and it will blossom whatever it you whatever it will happen it will happen that's all happen yeah that's that's uh, something i i agree with uh, bharat that uh, yeah. i think probably the learning brings us to this point oh yes this learning is amazing you see the learning when you come to vedanta is in the in the subject of free will and faith you become you become really an expert once you learn vedanta my second uh, question or thought is uh, it's not about this prarabdha of the karma or anything and i'm going to the totality and i'm when we say the possibility as i said you know the possibility of existence in the sky or akasha now how do you actually tap that knowledge from akasha to get to brahman or is it the vedanta study Oh, yes. good, good. It's a good question. You see, this uh, this knowledge about Brahman mm. is in the Veda. It is in the scriptures. It, it is, it is, it is there in the scriptures. You have to use the scriptures to tap that knowledge. Like, for example, right now we are studying the Taitri Upanishad. This Taitri Upanishad verses are the verses which are there in some. in some form when do we say that this knowledge is unmanifest and becomes manifest when we are when we are in the waking state it is manifest when we in the sleep state it is unmanifest the knowledge is there scriptures are there it is unmanifest condition in the sleep state manifest condition in the waking state to answer your question about how to go be how to uh, tap that knowledge of atma there is only one way the one way is study the scriptures it is the study understanding of the scriptures which will make you realize i am the atma there is no other way the the teachers the shankaracharyas bhashyams and you know the commentaries and everything all whatever you study in the upanishads clearly say that atma is your nature and you can realize this nature it is revealed only by the scriptural verses 
there is no other method. It is it, you, that is the way of tapping it. Okay. And the way to tap it is attend sessions, read books. These are all the different meditate, contemplate. These are the, all the methods by which you tap whatever is available to you, given to you. See, what we are studying is just a small portion of what exists in this whole cosmos about the Vedas. We are only studying a small portion in, a, in one hour session, two hour session. We are studying. But then that is what will give me the fruit of the study. The fruit lies, it comes to us when we are, when we, our mind is mature enough to claim that fruit. And that is why it is a, it is a continuous process. We just keep, keep on listening, be in the track. Don't go out of the track because to come back to the track, it becomes very difficult. So those who are um, into, say, for example, I've seen people who are very, very good in um, mantras because when I go to the temple, I see they are very good. They know so many mantras. They know so many bhajans. They know so many rituals. Uh, and I don't know any of that. You know, no, don't worry feel, about it. No, no, no. I, I, well, how would that? Uh, no, but is, uh, my my question is: knowing Vedanta, I know I'm on the path of moksha. Uh, would these uh, individuals um, are they also? Is the uh, how is that they will attain this? I mean, will they come on this path, or will they find their way to moksha in a different way? Okay. See, again, I'm giving you what the answer is there in the, in the scriptures only. The scriptures tell us that there is only one final path. And the final path is Jnana Yoga. Mm -hmm. To come to Jnana Yoga, what scripture says, there are thousands of methods. And it is, and it, 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 it also depends on your prarabdha, your punyam, your papam, ishvara, ishvara, uh, buddhi. You know, there are so many factors which are connected with it. So when you are looking at the world and seeing somebody is doing bhajan, but I don't know bhajan, somebody is doing uh, uh, tirtha yatra to, uh, to Kedarnath, I can't even walk uh, a few miles. There. So these things you don't compare, no need to compare. So just drop mm -hmm. it. They, they, see, people, you see, for example, that is his prarabdha, he is going. That is her prarabdha, she is doing this action. No, I'm looking at it as a as a observer. Yeah, I'm, if you're I'm at not talking person, about yeah. uh, myself and comparing. I'm looking yeah. at that person and thinking, how is his path no, panning you out? See, you, you cannot compare. You are only saying, as you, if you're using it as a witness, then yeah. you will, if you are a witness, then you will just accept all bodies, all minds as lower order of reality. Oh, okay. So I, I'm because I'm trying to think beyond. I'm thinking, okay, he's on this path and he knows all these things. That means, oh, what uh, is he? When when you think he's going to come on this no, path? No, of no, you, you you never, no, 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 no. These are all <laughs> wrong, wrong questions. Wrong, this is all wrong, wrong, wrong directions. <laughs> Okay. So I should not think, I think of it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, wait, Mr. Shekha, wait, one more question. <laughs> Jack, <Go ahead>. yeah. <laughs> wait, not, 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 not question, just uh, interesting. Um, Chantal just mentioned, right? In fact, if Most the vicious. person who, who know who, who did all those, right, maybe they they don't even know that they are the pure consciousness, you know? That's point number one. Okay, that's what I I just want to say, you know, when the baby comes to this earth, she knows nothing or he knows nothing. And it has it, as she or he grow up, you know, the baby grow up, and it, it's a it's a journey that teach teach him to do it certainly, certain things. And until you know, just like me, I gone through the process. If today I did not listen to you uh by sharing, I will not want to unleash, you know, uh, throw away everything and say, I'm Brahman. So it's interesting uh, as a human being, when you came to this world, you know nothing. But because, of course, I have my up and down and all those. But then today, uh, I'm still listening to you. Of course, it's so profound. 
But then I say, okay, if I'm Brahman, there's nothing at all. I'm still happy. So it's like I have to throw away all the illusion, you know, uh, at this stage until the day I went. I mean, even if I, I, I yeah, <laughs> that, that's very really interesting, you know. So that, that's irony of the human uh, life, yeah. Correct. See, whatever happens in the world is a seen world. It is, it is, it is seen, it has got its own laws. You just accept the laws and move on. Like you accept the laws of gravitation, planetary movements, sun rising, earth moving. You accepted the law of karma, law of prarabdha, law of this free will and fate, and leave it at that. Yeah. Leave it at that. It, 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 accept the law like you see that or the whole see the main thing you should understand this whole cosmos is run is controlled by some laws yeah you see the laws cannot be cannot uh, cannot just be there by itself it needs an intelligent principle which is controlling it so therefore what shankaracharya clearly says is don't try to analyze the world Analyze yourself. Drop the world and just ask, who is the seer? Who is the experiencer? Then you are in the right. Okay. Okay? Good. I'm very happy. Uh, so many questions and answers. Uh, I know this topic, the moment we enter free will topic, I know it is a nine o'clock show. You know, I will be closing only at nine o'clock. So anyway, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, there were some other people who put up their hands. Anna, you had a question you want to ask? Um, well, okay, I will ask the question. I was just wondering, maybe it's still with the free will. Um, uh, is there any way for us um, to help others to come to the teachings? Because the teachings are for us. So if we listen, we get the benefit of it. But uh, let's say people around us, um, they don't come in contact with the teachings or maybe uh, that's not something they're interested in. So it's not necessary that I want to run and do something about it. But in general, I'm just wondering, can we uh, help others in some way to maybe uh, let, let's say plant that seed of something else so maybe the teachings or is this completely not up to us you see it's uh, like and, this yeah, yeah your question is a very valid question because you have benefited from this knowledge and you want to share this knowledge to somebody see the basic question is rising up because you feel there is some there is some merit to this knowledge now the answer to the, your question is, the best way you can share this knowledge is discuss this in case somebody comes to you with a problem, help them to solve the problem. Suppose you find somebody has, has got some sorrow in life and he or she comes to you. If you can help the person through this knowledge, you explain in such a way that the person is able to understand, get some light about his own mind. 99% of the problems are related to the mind. The thinking. Mm -hmm. It is the thinking which makes the difference. If you can help the person to get into right thinking, that itself is a very big step in helping others. Right thinking. Just tell them, why do you do, is there a possibility that you can think in this fashion? Tune their mind and say that your thinking is wrong, but if you can look in this way, you can change. If he benefits, if he, she benefits from this conversation with you, definitely they will come back. To you. And then you tell them, you want to learn more? learn more, there are scriptures available. There are things which are available. I have known people who have who had sufferings in their life. 
I told them, study Bhagavad Gita for three months, six months. Don't ask questions about why, what, this. I only tell them, just study Bhagavad Gita for six months, go through some of the chapters. Just go through it. Just listen. Keep listening to uh, some of the scriptural texts. They have come back and told me, this has been a transformation. Yeah. Complete transformation. You see, what happens is the mind has got a certain, has got into a certain habit of thinking in the same groove again and again and again and again. And this is what is called as suffering. And they, it's, it, they will never be able to know how to come out of that. But it is not easy to convince them to come to give. That is why I said that just to speak to them and the first, first aid is just try to counsel to them. Be a counselor, be a mentor. Once they have understood your value of your conversations, then they will accept what you are saying. Then you put them into the scriptures. You can even form a small. Uh, you can form a, a small study circle and say, "Okay, we'll just study together. Uh, maybe take uh, take a simple tattva for the four or five sessions, and then you know start start a small study circle. Uh, you, you know there are different age groups. There are different different age groups. There are different different methods. You need not follow to everybody to come to Upanishads. It's not possible." So at different times you use your 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 you, you, you want to help somebody in the best way you try to help them and slowly they will change. And the moment they feel that what you're saying is value to them, they'll come back to you. Shekhi, I just have a comment on this that people will not um, uh, accept or understand or agree unless I think they have done that much, of, they've come with that much of prarabdha karmas or have gone through that process. Because in my own house, we are five of us, my, myself and two sisters and my parents. Um, when I talk to my mom, it's not possible to explain to her anything or even talk to her about Bhagavad Gita. Although she knows Bhagavad Gita in her, in her house, my grandfather was a great reader of it and knower of it. And I think he was Jeevan Mukta as well, the way he used to behave, as I know. Uh, but when it comes to my father, I can have a conversation with him. And same with one of my sister, I can have a conversation, but my other sister doesn't believe in any of this. So within our house, I can see that because of our different past, um, our attraction and aversion of Bhagavad Gita is very obvious. And I think it, um, I don't know how, what has brought me and how I landed up in this place. But um, I do feel that, yes, it's just started with, for me, it started with just thinking of I should meditate. Then it started with, you know, uh, chanting and uh, um, doing the japa of Gayatri Mantra. And then I eventually reached here. Um, but this thing doesn't happen, I feel, in mm -hmm. everybody's life. Even after mm -hmm. you, having people around you with the same, uh, knowledge and I find I am reaching a point where I'm only attracting and talking to people who sync with me in this world and those who were not syncing and who still believe body is them and are not in this they have walked away and they have or rather I have shrunk away from them but either way my circle of friends are now becoming only the ones whom I can talk with uh, this spiritual study and spiritual concepts and I think, I don't know whether that is evolving or as a result of the Prarabdha Karmas or, you know, that, that's what I feel. But I don't yeah. think it's possible for anybody to come here and I'll teach you, I'll solve your problem through Bhagavad Gita. And no, 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 no. That's, you. that's what you're saying is correct, uh, Shanta. I think Anna is asking from a very, uh, at, a, at a very, very uh, simplistic level uh, of some people who are not exposed, how do I help them? That's all. Mm. She's she's not saying that I will push them into Bhagavad Gita or Upanishads like no, that. No, no, yeah. but uh, but I would say to Anna is uh, people who are attracted to Bhagavad Gita will come to you with 
questions which can be solved through your knowledge of this knowledge or this spiritual knowledge. And I've seen that. And the people who don't believe in this knowledge will not even come to you with that question. Correct. Um, yeah, Anna, you feeling. want to say something to this? Uh, yes, I will try to make it very short because it's been already a long discussion. Uh, I'm coming from a place that uh, uh, in psychology, there are cases where um, somebody was born and, and was completely doing only evil actions. And uh, basically, even the psychiatrist gave up on that little girl. Uh, it wasn't her fault from this life that she did something that was quite obvious, but she couldn't stop herself. And only um, uh, one woman who just never gave up on her, it took her over 10 years, but she transformed that little girl. And now this little girl, she's helping other people who, who have maybe really like bad instincts and want to do only bad in the world now this this girl grew up to a very compassionate loving person mm -hmm. so for me examples like that kind of show that maybe we shouldn't give up on people or walk away but there's always something we can do to help them we don't have to push it but maybe persistence and just being there for them if they need us, you know, and being always open to help. Maybe that's enough. Um, yeah. Because life shows that, you know, uh, even cases where we think, oh, you know, nothing, uh, nothing ever will change here. Actually, uh, it does change, you know. So I think maybe it's us who already gave up on that. Uh, make that mistake that we're giving up. Uh, but again, it's not about pushing. So naturally, I guess sometimes things like that will happen, but maybe not always. And it's probably then the wisdom. Um, should we stay? Should we walk away? Should we help? Should we not help? But that we can only answer for ourselves. Good. Yeah, Anna, uh, like I said, you try to help as much as you can, but don't feel guilty if you can't change the person. That's all. You do whatever extent to whatever extent you can go ahead, help to whatever extent you can, and uh, and uh, leave the rest to uh, less to the, uh, the leave the rest to the higher principle, God principle, and let let him take care. That's it. Okay, it's a, it's a long, uh, it's a long, long distance, a long time. We have to finish. Uh, 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 thank you very much. It was a very uh, great session today with so many uh, viewpoints and uh, uh, good. I'm glad that so many uh, so many people asked and could could, could, could understand their uh, doubts. Yeah, yeah, well, why, well, oh. I have a question uh, regarding this uh, free will and or fate or destiny or whatever we call. Um, I have a friend who was a devotee quite some time and uh, he committed suicide in spite of uh, a lot of encouragement here and there. So uh, what, what do we have to say about it? So what you're saying is you have a devotee who has uh, gone here and there, okay. He, he, was, he was a devotee for quite some time but do not do for some reason, he committed suicide. Oh, he committed suicide. Okay. See, these things, uh, when it comes to suicide and things like that, it is part of the karma. It is, it is, it is part of the karma which happened and that's it. You know, there is no other answer to these questions. You accept it, it happened, and just forget about it. it ha see, life and death is only part of the karma. There is no other. There is not no other way to describe life or death. Uh, he had to go this way. You see, the, uh, how the body, how you leave this body, it depends on how the prara, the karma works. So don't let your mind think too much about in this angle. What you that's what I always said that there are certain events in this world you can't control. Drop it. It is out of your hands. It is there is some other controller. Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to handle such situations. 
Sarva Dharman Parityacha Manekam Sharanam Paracha. Means, oh Lord, whatever I can control, give me the strength to control. Whatever I cannot control, give me the wisdom to understand that I have no control over these situations. Okay. So, can we say it is a fate or destiny? I don't... It, is, it is fate. It is destiny. That's all. It is you. You may call it whatever it is. See, it is very simple. A, a young person, 24 years old, very healthy, and then while playing tennis, he has a heart attack and he goes off. What do you call this? It's fate. You know, it is. there is no answer. You can't get an answer to this. So we can, so so we can just, so so we can just say home. that uh, we are the observer of Anita. That's all. No, no. You see, in, when it comes to such situations, don't bring Vedanta. Just go to the Dharma level. Uh, uh, treat this as Gavaharika Satya. It is a it is a truth belonging to our world of actions. Don't run away from it. Just say that there is a controller of this world, of this waking world, there is a controller. There is a Lord who controls the waking world. Waking, dream, sleep. Waking, dream, sleep is not controlled by me. It is, there is some superpower which controls. What I experience in the waking, there is some free will I have. But waking state itself, I have no control. That is why, that is where your, your, your belief in that higher level of um, higher uh, higher uh, the Paramartika status. There is a higher level which controls this universe. So leave it to that the Lord who controls the universe is my way of looking at situations at our at our level of activity. Okay, and at the mind level, at your own at your own level, you can bring Vedanta. How I am beyond the mind, you can change. That is at an individual level. Okay? So work at your individual level by studying Vedanta. But when it comes to facing the world, leave it to the controller, leave it to the Lord. That's okay. the only way we can, uh, we can help them by saying, uh, I mean, it's a fate or destiny or something. That's all. Just prayer. But, what you can do is only pray. Mm -hmm. There is only prayer which we can offer, and uh, and uh, we can do a prayer for their family. Mm -hmm. You can pray for the family and say, let the family have the strength to face whatever they are facing. You pray to the Lord yourself. You are contributing to that. That is the way you contribute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say a small prayer in your. You close your eyes and you tell a small prayer to the Lord. Oh Lord. Please bless family. their soul. Yeah. Say, hey, you pray and say, Oh Lord, please take care of the soul. You pray. You pray yourself and you will get the benefit and you will be able to help the family. The prayer will help. Okay. Mm -hmm. may, may the Lord bless their soul. Yeah, that's correct. That is the way to treat it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Thank you. Thank you.